a very good afternoon to all the participants present here a very good afternoon to dr kadrajan sir dr wilson sir and all the other dignitaries present here i welcome you all to the second day of this national webinar on marine research and aquaculture so at the outset i would like to uh, put my sincere thanks to our chancellor ma'am and president sir for permitting us to conduct this national webinar series also i would like to uh, thank our vice chancellor dr sasi prabha ma'am dr logo sharmagam our pro vice chancellor dr ss rao our registrar dr sundari our director administration and dr igni sebasti prabhu our controller of examinations this webinar series would not have been possible without the initiation of our pro vice chancellor dr wilson aruni sir thank you very much sir for initiating the events in our department now i request our uh, pro vice chancellor sir to welcome our guest for the day today so uh, respected uh, uh, invited speaker for the hour uh, kadri sen sir uh, and my most beloved uh, uh, person whom i would ever like to uh, listen to as a lecturer um, uh, the head of the departments uh, dr ramesh uh, dr narain uh, all the faculty members uh, my dear participant friends it is really an immense pleasure to be a part of uh, this uh, webinar on uh, marine aquaculture um, as you know that satibama is beyond leap and bounds uh, not only venturing into in house uh, research and academic efforts at the same time uh, also in virtual more and uh, we are into webinar uh, since long after the covid lockdown so despite all the trends that happen now either you now die of covid or you die of uh, looking at webinars uh, this is a different webinar where uh, i think the the organizers have put forth where you will see and you will hear fascinating lectures uh, and i really thank and congratulate uh, all the people who have come here to and be a part of this and give a great support thank you so much thank you sir now i request dr maslamani selvam to introduce the speaker to the audience good afternoon to all of you so first of all i should thank uh, our pro vice chancellor sir dr wilson arni sir for uh, his moral support so already is helping us to conduct this program and uh, coming to the today speaker professor dr k kadrajan dsc uh, so i'll tell about uh, professor kadrajan uh, before starting uh, about sir so he is my phd guy so i am proudly saying like this uh, and he is now a honorary professor and ugc bsr faculty fellow and uh, formerly dean and director of cis in marine biology faculty of marine sciences annamalai university arangipette and uh, today's topic is uh, like uh, mangroves and uh, aquaculture regarding his uh, contribution to the scientific uh, world he is a well known scientist uh, those who are studying or working in mangroves he is well known to all the people all over the world and uh, regarding his uh, uh, research contribution he has compiled more than 5000 species mostly in the mangrove environment and uh, at the outset he has discovered one new species called rhizopora annamaleana he has given uh, the credit to the annamalai university that's why it's uh, annamaleana and uh, about the mangrove forest uh, regarding his uh, mangrove forest development he has developed more than uh, 220 hectares in the vellar estuary itself where it is located in arangipete and uh, in the year 2004 it helped a lot to the local people because of this uh, hundreds of people were saved and uh, regarding his uh, awareness and training program on mangroves uh, he has given a lot of training to the young scientists budding scientists like children and uh, students as well as scholars from uh, not only in india as well as 28 countries and uh, the publication he has published more than 500 publications and more than 10 books 
and research projects has completed more than 30 34 research project completed now also he is having some of the research project to work on mangroves in india as well as uh, to the world and uh, to his credit he has uh, completed uh, 40 phd's so i am also one among the 40 and he has produced 22 mphil students and so he got lot of awards so i, I have given only a few like a Sci- tamil nadu scientist award in the year 1995 and internationally also uh, recognized and given naga award in the year 2001 and he is also uh, elected fellow of national institute of ecology in 2004 and a distinguished teacher award given by the anamala university in the year 2009 and mangrove society of india uh, awarded so it's a repute it's a given with the award in the year 2017 and as well as Uh, electoral elected fellow of national academy of biological sciences in 2019 and he has visited more than uh, 23 countries i can say and uh, i have given some of the list singapore malaysia and vietnam kenya australia sri lanka thailand hong kong japan china senegal gambia and nigeria so finally i i could say one only one thing to about my professor dr k kadresan is a real scientist i can say uh, so he will he taught us how to uh, do research not only research but also how to live in the society uh, how to tackle the problems in the living world so like that here i have learned a lot from him not only me Uh, all uh, all my uh, friends uh, those were my colleagues and wherever he goes he uh, is a bright star i can say is a superstar in mangroves uh, so with this uh, small introduction i invite my professor uh, to give or share his experience to our delegates thank you sir Uh, visible yes sir yes sir most brainy and beautiful intellectuals i am kadiresan i must be thankful to dr wilson pro vice chancellor for having given me this opportunity i must be very much thankful to my beloved student dr masila mani selvam maasu illada mani selvam uh, and dr ramesh head of the department so and all the authorities of uh, satyabama institute of science and technology today i am going to speak about mangroves and aquaculture mangroves are oceanic rain forest tidal forest coastal woodland the only blue carbon forest on the earth its marvel of nature ecological wonder seen in splendor arching roots breathing roots mud dancing fishes salt to vomiting leaves breathtaking beauty i love mangroves i love mangroves i had my honeymoon trip also in the mangroves 
So I love mangroves very much. Mangroves are the only tall tree forest between land and sea in tropical and subtropical coast. So only tall tree forest between land and sea in tropical and subtropical coast. So since they are located between land and sea, the water system supports the plankton and fishes. The muddy sediment supports the benthas, and the trees support oysters, snails, barnacles, crabs, and other invertebrates. So, in my view, the mangroves are a natural open aquaculture system, and the mangrove ecosystem has got three important components. One is vegetated area. mud flat area where you don't find trees and water creek area the water creek area supports 40% of the fish resources of the mangrove ecosystem the mud flats 20% and vegetated area supports 40% of the fish resources mangrove support fish resources 75% of the tropical fishes are found within the mangroves 80% of the global fruit fish catch is dependent on mangroves mangroves serve as feeding breeding and nursery grounds for prawns crabs mollusks fish birds reptiles and mammals so mangroves are home for giving shelter mangroves are hotel for providing food mangroves are army for providing protection mangroves are hospital for providing you know the clinical medicine the mangroves are highly productive and uh, mangrove forest produce enormous amounts of litter about 8 tons per hectare per year and the litter is cut by the crabs decomposed by microorganisms and thereby the decomposing organic matter detritus is produced as food for fishes and this detritus is protein rich in nature to feed the detritus which is rich in protein the zonale fishes aggregate in the mangrove water in the natural marine environment see the nitrogen or protein content is very low and therefore the protein rich the detritus is available in mangrove so the swarel fishes aggregate in the mangrove water so for example the many of the marine species are completing their life cycle in the mangrove environment the young ones and zonales of prawn they are coming to the mangrove waters they are feeding on the protein rich detritus food they are growing faster after attaining the sub adult stage they go back to the deep sea there they are getting married without any dowry and they are releasing the young ones and the young ones are again coming to mangrove waters so this life cycle is dependent on the mangrove forest the the life cycle of the mud crab is very interesting the mud crabs they they are found to be present abundantly in the mangrove environment and the mangrove environment is varying in temperature and the low i mean salinity and even though the salinity and temperatures are varying these crabs are highly adapted to the varying conditions of temperature and salinity but the young ones of the crab cannot tolerate this fluctuating temperature so therefore the female 
uh, crabs are moving to the offshore region to the sea and the spawning takes place only in the offshore region and uh, the they are releasing the larvae and the larvae are developing in the offshore region after attaining the megalopa stage the megalopa are, are recruited in the mangrove environment and further growth is taking place the mud crabs are commercially very important and they are highly dependent on the mangrove forest so our people have developed a brush park technique for enhancing the fish catches in mangrove water not only our people sri lanka and west africa what they do is they cut the mangrove branches and keep it in the water allowing to decompose for some time see the fishes are attracted here and they they collect the fishes we found experimentally three fold increase in the fishes due to the mangrove branches which are decomposed so we experimentally proved whether the mangroves are attracting the shrimps towards the decomposing litter so we collected the litter in the bag litter bag and allowed them to decompose in the coastal water and every day almost we collected uh, the prawn which are attracted around the decomposing litter and also we collected litter for analysis of microorganisms and the level of uh, protein nitrogen so we found a very interesting trend like this after 30 days more number of zonal shrimps were attracted towards the decomposing mangrove leaves up to 60 days of decomposition similar trend is uh, seen with the decomposing uh, uh, litter where the total protein nitrogen content uh, was very high during that period and also nitrogen fixing bacteria are more during this period so now we say these zonal shrimps are attracted it is because of the protein content in the decomposing organic matter and it is because of the nitrogen fixing bacteria found to be present in the decomposing uh, mangrove litter is it really true then we prove it we isolated the nitrogen fixing bacteria and uh, not only that say for example acetobacter vinylandi this is a strain we isolated and then we used this strain as a feed for the bacteria uh, for the shrimp pinnaeus monodon uh, in the culture tank and we found enhanced growth and production of the stream we grew See, not only nitrogen fixing uh, you know microorganisms mangroves are microbial paradises the beneficial probiotic bacteria like lactobacilli yeast and others are abundantly present very interestingly there is a group of microorganism called thrastokytrites these thrastokytrites are the fungal proteins they produce the pufa polyunsaturated fatty acids especially dha and the concentration of 30 to 45% of the total fatty acids and this dha has got tremendous antibacterial and antioxidant property and we proved that the dha uh, incorporated with the feed is boosting the growth of aquaculture species sea bass lattice calcarifera and uh, we said uh, actually the immune system is very important there are two types of immune system one is uh, non specific immune system another one is specific immune system in the case of uh, crustaceans shrimps and crabs so you don't have the specific immune system only immunomodulatory activity and the immunomodulator are the hemocyte counts in the hemolymph like blood cell count in the blood hemocyte counts and hemolymph more is the hemocyte counts 
better will be the immunity of the Swims and Crabs. There are two types of hemocytes. One is uh, hyaline, that is colorless and small. The second type of hemocyte is granulated, large and dark. The third uh, immunomodulator is endobiotic. And these crustaceans have got these endobiotics in the hemolymph. The endobiotics are like antibiotics, proteins of low molecular weight, very high stability, with broad spectral antimicrobial activity. Hence, it is non-specifically binding to the invading microorganisms and inactivating them. Lectins, the fourth immunomodulator, which is a sugar binding protein, inactivating the pathogen and also removing them through phagocytosis. So, this requires calcium as cofactor. Other immunomodulatory process are conferred by uh, the factors like humocyanin pigment present in the hemolin and also the total protein glucose present in the hemolin, lactate, osmolality and the key electrolytes like sodium, potassium, chloride, calcium and magnesium. See, it is very interesting, the enzymes are playing vital role in the defense mechanism of crustaceans, shrimps and crabs. See, for example, the mangroves are producing enormous amount of phenolics. And these phenolics, they go and hit the granular hemocyte. When the phenolics hit the granular hemocyte, the granular hemocyte will release the phenol oxidase. This phenol oxidase will uh, act on the phenols and it is converted into quinone and melanin. And the quinone and melanin, they are highly antimicrobial. So therefore, the invading pathogens, uh, they are killed immediately by this uh, process. Another interesting immunomodulator is carrageenone. This is the algal polysaccharide. It will go and hit the hyaline hemocyte. When the hyaline hemocytes are hit by this immunomodulator and this hyaline hemocyte is producing an enzyme called transglutaminase in there. This transglutaminase enzyme will clot the hemolymph. So hemolymph will become a gel. So the invading pathogens will be immobilized and inactivated by this gel-like structure form. See, in the white stream, treated with carrageenone, 6 mu g per gram, you know, controlled the vitreosis by increasing the total hemocyte count and phenol oxidase activity. And nanoparticles. So, we prove the silver nanoparticles synthesized by using mangrove extract are very efficient in controlling the vibriosis in Pinaeus monoda. It is very, very efficient in controlling vibriosis. You see, the hemocyte, this is in control, you see the hemocyte. In the vibrio attacked uh, shrimps, the hemocytes are, you know, very much damaged. And if silver nanoparticles are uh, treated, there is no damage to the hemocyte. When the vibrio affected the shrimps are treated with silver nanoparticles, you know, the it is like controlled, the hemocytes are saved by silver nanoparticles. And regarding the specific immune response, a mangrove species called acanthus species is very efficient, we found. Also, the the Japanese they have also found out. The aqueous root extract is producing an enzyme called nitric oxide synthase, synthase enzyme. So this will produce nitric oxide. This will increase the macrophage function, you know, in the case of, uh, you know, the fissure in the immunomodulation. Well, there are three types of coastal ecosystems, okay? And these three 
coastal ecosystems are very beautiful. That is why I have shown the actress, and don't mistake me. So coral reef ecosystems, seagrass ecosystem, and mangrove ecosystems are the three types of coastal ecosystems. And the fish migrate among these three coastal ecosystems. Seagrass and mangroves they serve as nursery. The adults are mostly found to be present in the coral reefs. So this fish migration is very important among the coastal ecosystems, and the connectivity is very important. But uh, not much work has been carried out. So therefore, we studied whether the mangroves are supporting the seagrass bed and coral reefs. Um, we conducted an experiment in Gulf of Manna. So we selected a mangrove spot, mangrove seagrass interface, seagrass site, and seagrass coral reef interface, and coral reef alone. So in a seascape approach, we collected, in a straight line, we collected the samples and analyzed. If you look at the primary productivity in waters, the phytoplankton productivity highest in mangroves. It is intermediate in sea grasses and minimum in coral reefs. This is the phytoplankton primary productivity. Coming to the heterotrophic bacterial counts, also showing the same trend: maximum mangrove, minimum coral, and sea grass intermediate. If you look at the benthic faunal counts, neo fauna and macro fauna, again. The mangroves are supporting more benthic organisms, minimum in coral, intermediate in sea grasses. So we uh, we used the fatty acids and stable isotopes and proved that the mangroves are producing enormous amount of litter, and the litters are decomposed by the microorganisms. And uh, the microorganism decomposition releasing the nutrients like uh, nitrogen and phosphorus, and these nutrients are utilized by phytoplankton or microalgae, and the microalgae or phytoplankton is the starting point of the food web in the marine environment. So therefore, the mangroves are very important in operating. The marine food web. So, if you look at this picture, when the area of mangrove increases, the number of shrimp species also increases. In the same way, mangrove area increases, the number of crab species increases. Therefore, species diversity increases with the area of mangrove. Not only that, the area of mangrove increases. The landing or the fish catch is also increasing steadily. As a result, you know, economic benefit is also increasing steadily when the mangrove areas are increasing. Of all the mangrove estuaries, of all the ecosystems, mangrove estuaries have the highest fisheries value character. And uh, so, mangrove support. The coastal livelihood and food security. In one hectare mangrove area, we have 25 million commercial fish individuals are found to be present. See, only the fishes, mangroves serve as habitat for wildlife and endangered species. So, if you take royal Bengal tigers, Sundarbans is the only mangrove tiger kingdom. It is found to be present only in our Sundarbans in India and Bangladesh. In Borneo mangroves, you can see only this proboscis monkey. And in Philippines mangroves, you have sailfin lizard and uh, Bengalian. Uh, you know, you can find to, you can find to be present in the mangroves of Philippines. So therefore, the mangroves are providing habitat for wildlife and endangered species. Ah. Mangroves most intense carbon sink in the world, and since it is uh, removing atmospheric carbon dioxide, 
to the global warming issue is reduced and climate change is mitigated by the presence of mangroves. Mangrove carbon sequestration potential is 10 times greater than the tropical forest. So the mangroves are very efficient in carbon sequestration as compared to tropical forest. So it is proved in, uh, in Abu Dhabi, UAE, you know, Abu Dhabi city was very, very hot, 45 degrees centigrade, very hot city. Now they developed the mangrove park in the city, right in the center of the city. Now the whole environment of Abu Dhabi city is cool, it is proved. And the mangroves prevent the ocean acidification and coral bleaching. And every year mangroves export alkalinity of 4.2 trillion moles per year to coastal waters. So therefore the ocean acidification problem can also be solved by the mangroves. And my student has found the solar ultraviolet radiation on the top of the Kennedy is 12.5 kilojoules per meter square per day. But under the Kennedy, no ultraviolet uh, radiation, zero ultraviolet radiation. When we studied the shrimps and the head region, especially the eye region of the shrimp, they are absorbing the solar ultraviolet B radiation. So it is highly deleterious to the shrimps. So in the open system, the impact of ultraviolet radiation will have the negative effect on the aquaculture species. So body is not absorbing that much, but only head region, especially eye region, is absorbing the ultraviolet radiation. But mangroves are giving protection to the shrimps from the solar UV radiation. See, mangroves, they are reducing the water pollutant, especially toxic heavy metals. The toxic heavy metals are converted into sulphide and they are buried deep into the soil, not available to the environment. And they are buried. And uh, also they are maintaining, mangroves are maintaining the water quality of the environment. The bivalves, mollusks and seaweed associated with mangroves they clean up the water by absorbing nutrients, reviving the oxygen level. It is estimated a bivalve can filter 25 liter of water per day. So they are very efficient. Coastal protection. So if you have mangroves, it will be like this. If you don't have mangroves, it will become like this. So therefore, the short line erosion is caused in the absence of mangroves. And mangroves give coastal protection against the extreme weather events, tsunamis, flood surges, and sea level rises. So therefore, the ecosystem services of mangroves are many. The important ones are carbon sequestration and mitigating global warming, breeding nursery and feeding ground for fish, and coastal livelihood and food security and coastal protection against sea level rise, flood surges, shoreline erosion, and solar UV radiation. And mangroves support seagrass beds and coral reefs. Mangroves provide habitat for wildlife and endangered species. And mangroves reduce pollution and maintain water quality. Therefore, mangrove conservation is very, very, very important. Very, very important. What about that is my next section of my talk. So when mangrove conservation and mangroves are important, whether aquaculture is important? Yes, aquaculture is important. So the global demand for shrimp production, the global demand for shrimp production is 50% of the total value of fishery products traded in the world. So the shrimps are the living dollars and they earn lots of foreign exchange to any country. So aquaculture is also important.
and aquaculture they will produce the cheapest protein uh, pro protein food for the people so mangroves are important aquaculture is equally important but people say and i used to say the aquaculture is like wife and the mangrove should be husband and they should live together intimately but unfortunately today what is happening husband and wife they are quarreling with each other aquaculture is on one side and environmental is other side both of them are fighting with each other so it's all due to lack of science and understanding of these two important components aquaculture and mangroves so therefore uh, we need to understand we need to understand very shocking news 16th of this month 16th of, of this month indonesian marine uh, maritime affairs and fisheries minister is telling that the mangrove forest will not be converted into ponds for shrimp or fish farming he declared on 16th of this month and uh, 7th of this month it is told the civil war did not damage sri lankan mangrove forest but the shrimp farming damaged it this is the blame attributed to our forest 90% of the shrimp farms in the mangrove areas are simply abandoned because of the disease outbreaks so these are all uh, the now uh, people are going against the aquaculture so the issue of mangroves and aquaculture the issue is people say that aquaculture is the main driver of global mangrove loss for example southeast asia 34% of the world mangroves are present but 90% of the world aquaculture is being operated in southeast asia there 50% of the mangrove is lost and it is also said suppose if you convert to one hectare of mangrove for shrimp the carbon emission is equivalent to 5 hectare of the tropical evergreen forest converted for shrimp pond or 11.5 uh, hectare of tropical dry farm well this is the issue what is the solution mangrove friendly aquaculture is the solution and we have to focus more on this mangrove deforestation mangrove deforestation will lead to climate change the mangrove deforestation will result in the sea surface temperature increase it's because of you know the carbon uh, carbon sequestration when it is lowered the sea surface temperature is increasing and the sea level rise is also there then coastal flooding cyclone and then varying rainfall altering rainfall drought salinity all these things are happening all these factors climatic change factors they are affecting the coastal aquaculture farm coastal aquaculture farm for example water pollution will reduce the uh, oxygen level and less primary productivity the reduced light due to turbidity will lower the photosynthesis and high carbon dioxide and high salinity and high water temperature and low ph they all have the impact on the aquaculture productivity Uh, you know in the event of uh, climate change so my dear friends we need a sustainable aquaculture coastal aquaculture so for sustainable coastal aquaculture what we should do is we should increase the mangrove restoration and conservation so if the mangrove restoration conservation is increased the ecosystem services will be increased so at the same time socio economic benefits also increase and uh, in addition the resilience of the climate change the resilience to climate change will also be increased ultimately leading to sustainable coastal aquaculture so therefore mangrove restoration and conservation okay 
uh, will lead to the sustainable coastal aquaculture in future. So this uh, beautiful person is none other than myself only. Myself only, I am sitting on the boat. Just look at a small stick of mangrove who is having, you know, how much of, you know, oysters they are supporting. So the oyster culture, clam culture, mussel culture can very well be done in the mangrove area. And the crab patterning is most successful venture. So the crab patterning can be done in the mangrove area. Then pinfish culture and floating cages. And artinia culture, polychaete culture, polychaete uh, per kg costing about uh, 2,000 rupees. And seaweed culture, all these cultures are compatible in the mangrove waters and mangrove water farming. And uh, unfortunately, we have not much attempted on these aspects. If we can integrate all these farming practices in the mangrove environment, in the mangrove environment, Without disturbing the mango environment, we can achieve great many things. One Elangelian from Sirgali, he has developed a mitochondrial model of integrated aquaculture farm system. It is an integrated model. In the integrated model, mangroves, you know, the sea bark, crabs, all these things are being cultured and it is highly beneficial. Within nine months, uh, our cost benefit ratio is, uh, you know, one is to four, which is very successfully demonstrated in our uh, Tamil Nadu, it is uh, uh, demonstrated. Then Indonesians, they have given a beautiful model. This silvo fishery model, this has got two uh, gate, gate one, gate two. So the gate uh, one and two are the water lakes. You can see the water lakes. And you have the pond around. You have the pond for fish culture. And then the and then the mangroves in the center. Mangroves in the center. Separate uh, pond for fish and a separate mangrove area. And we have the inlet. So water outlet and water inlet. And what happens, the benefits of water purification, nursery, food provision, and wave attenuation. Very successful, ideal silvo fishery model has been demonstrated from Indonesia. Finally, I want to say about the artificial intelligence. Uh, artificial intelligence. Right? Artificial intelligence. The computer system. Thanks to the computer department of Satya Bhama Institute of Science and Technology, they have taken a lot of effort. The future is going to be dependent on computer system. Today we are realizing that after COVID and microbiologists and COVID, you know, got, got a very good, uh, you know, relationship. So the artificial intelligence is the com use of computer system to perform the task of human intelligence. This can be very well applied in aquaculture. Say, for example, uh, you can have the weather forecast, harvesting time, ideal harvesting time, and stocking time, you know, uh, weather uh, forecast can be made using this artificial intelligence. And uh, the water sensor, by using water sensor, we can maintain the optimal condition Using agrobat, uh, aquabat, aquabots, uh, robots, aqua robots, we can uh, do the treatment and the harvest without manually. We can use the robot and then we can go for harvesting. The ninety percent of the cost can be reduced by using the aquabots. Of course, uh, this is one. Then sensor monitoring for health and food intake of the aqua species. And uh, this uh, food intake can be monitored using this sensor. Then we can collect all the farming data and store on the cloud to make the decision to enhance the yield of the aquaculture. Then crowdsourcing uh, to establish aqua business communities to share the information. The crowdsourcing is very important. So artificial intelligence can be used in aquaculture. 
Now the artificial intelligence is very important in the health care system of not only human being but also of water. In the Hakko culture, early detection, correct diagnosis and decision making, further treatment, all these things are possible using the artificial intelligence. So by using the pathology data set and the pathology digitized images based on the histological data related to genes, protein expression profile and all, you know, you can uh, uh, early detection, accurate diagnosis and decision making for the treatment can be made using artificial intelligence. And, uh, you know, India has got more cell phones than tiles. We have more uh, more cell phones than tiles. Therefore, everyone has got toilet. Even a newborn baby is holding a you know mobile phone and operating it also. <laughs> Therefore, the artificial intelligence in aquaculture extensive service is very very important. The real time advisory for crop is from detection of disease and digital farming and farm services care uh, can help to the uh, Indian aqua farmer. Uh, what is the way forward? What is to be done in future? So we have to promote sustainable management of aqua farming. There, the silvo fishery. The silvo fishery is the integrated mangrove culture with brackish water aquaculture. Integrated trophic aquaculture that is growing different species from different trophic levels in an integrated uh, form. So this is integrated trophic aquifer. Then organic farming, without using uh, chemicals and the minimum damage to environment and the ecosystem based management. These three can be uh, possible for promoting the sustainable management of the aquaculture in future. Then lots of abandoned farms are available and we need to do the rehabilitation and restoration. See, for recovering the abandoned pond, it takes 10 years. Only after 10 years, the abundant pond can be restored and rehabilitated. So this is very, very important to step to be taken. And we have to improve the coastal livelihoods. And participation of the coastal people and communities are very important, for which the awareness raising to the coastal community is also important. You know, when I say participatory management, I recall uh, my past experience with the Dr. Masilla Mani Selvam. You know, before four days of tsunami, just before four days of tsunami, Dr. Masilla Mani Selvam, he mobilized the women, mobilized the women around my college. See, more than 100, 150 women and children they were all mobilized by Dr. Masila Mani Selva to the mangrove fields for making plantation. Now, just after four days tsunami came and many people died. And, you know, these people, the, the, uh, the women involved in the mangrove plantation, fortunately, they were not affected because they were living behind the mangrove forest developed by our students like Dr. Masila Mani Selva and others. You know, what happened? The people are all rushing to our department, you know, just simply, uh, you know, uh, prostrated in front of our feet and crying out. It is because of the mangroves, our lives were saved. I felt as if I got Nobel Prize for the students like Dr. Masila Mani for the great service they have done for the community, coastal community. So, coastal community livelihood should be strengthened. Their life should be ensured. And aquaculture is very important. And mangrove environment is also important. My dear friends, I always consider mangrove environment is like my mother. And aquaculture is my wife. And whether wife is important or mother is important for a husband, both are important. Both are very important for me. My mother also important. My wife is also important. Many people think, uh, many people are thinking that wife, W-I-F-E, is worries invited forever. No, it is wisdom invited forever. 
So therefore, the mangrove environment is like a mother to be cared with love, and aquaculture development is like a wife to be loved with care. So thank you very much for the opportunity given to me. Let us have a vision to see, bigger to act, hard to care, mangroves and aquaculture together, together for the benefit of the community, society, and the common man through science. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Thank you for the wonderful lecture, sir. Uh, I hope the participants they have enjoyed it very much, and there is a lot of comments stating it is a wonderful presentation. And uh, there are a few questions, sir. I would like to ask the questions from the on behalf of the participants, sir, with your permission. Before which, I request uh, Dr. Santanam, sir, from Bharatdasan University, to say a few words, sir. Sir. Yeah. Very good evening, sir. I am my rest. No, 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 thank you, thank you for your coming. <laughs> sir, I, I was I was logged in for, in advance, so advanced to hear you were an excellent and inspiring lecture as usual. So we are all uh, hearing your lecture. So we are all uh, actually uh, inspired by your uh, hard work. And I was my uh, I am a MSc student in our Center of Advanced Study in Marine Biology. So uh, by seeing you, your active, 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 I mean, uh, active work and hard work, sincerity in the research. So I have got uh, uh, interest in uh, doing the research. Sir. So I am very happy to uh, share my, uh, I mean, uh, feeling with the uh, participants. So our professor, Professor Kadiriyasan sir, is always uh, inspiring uh, a teacher. So uh, by uh, hearing his lecture and uh, even by attending his classes, uh, when I was my, my, my MSc student of marine biology, I uh, I mean I I I I actually I got a thirst uh, in entering into research after seeing the Professor Kadiriyasan sir and his team research involvement and sincerity and hard work. Very thank you very much, sir. Thanks for your uh, valuable you. uh, information. And uh, I mean, uh, an excellent uh, lecture. Uh, you, the way you explained, as usual, uh, by using the wife and the uh, mother. <laughs> uh, mother and wife both are important. So you, you, you excellently, I mean, uh, explained about the aquaculture and uh, mangrove. So if there is no mangrove, there is no simp, as you know well. Okay. So mangrove is like a mother, and the simp is like a wife. So uh, <laughs> the mother and wife both are important to form a good family. So, good family is human society. So, because of mangrove and shrimp, we are uh, surviving, sir. Thank you very much, sir, for your excellent and inspiring lecture, sir. So, I thank once again my friend, good friend, Dr. Maslamani, for uh, organizing such a wonderful uh, webinar on this topic, mangrove and aquaculture. So, my hats off to my teacher, Professor Kadri, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Sandhanath, sir. Thank you, sir. I also request Dr. Uh, Rajaram from Baradas University to share his feelings. Yeah, very good, on, good afternoon, sir. Uh, as usual, uh, we are uh, very much inspired your talk, sir. Uh, uh, whenever we used to see, watch your talk, you should give some uh, some quote like this. <laughs> End of the lecture, you should speak, you have some quote. This quote is very important. We like your lecture. Uh, it is very inspired, and I thank uh, Professor for a wonderful, wonderful lecture, and also I thank uh, all the organizers for arranging such a wonderful event. I thank every one of you. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Uh, we also have Dr. Tirunavakaras to serve with us. Thank you. Sir, would you like to say something, sir? Okay. Uh, maybe he'll be joining us, sir. Sir, uh, there are a few questions from the participants, sir. Yeah, what is the prime difference between halophyte and halophytic associates? Are these halophytic associates true salt tolerant uh, species, sir? No, actually, halophytes, you know, they are obligate. Okay. Halophyte associates, you know, they are facultative. That is, so they can adapt to the halophytic condition as well as, you know, non halophytic condition. Okay, sir. So, and Hello. there is an. Hello. Yes, sir. Uh, uh, we have sir? Dr. Tirnavkar Asi, sir, with us. Uh, yes. yes. Uh, sir, Professor, good evening, Professor. Good evening. Good evening. <laughs> uh, 
sir uh, we are we are very blessed to hear your voice again once again so uh, we are the generation uh, in uh, i mean in uh, between 97 to 2000 uh, period so it was a golden period of cas we have enjoyed a lot like uh, many professors like you uh, we gained the knowledge and experiences how to do the research how carry out the research how succeed the research so research means uh, i mean uh, the synonym i mean i can say uh, the cas in marinbali is one of the pioneer institute uh, leading in our country uh, so that's why uh, the, the many people we are uh, signing over uh, not only in india throughout the globe even in nasa also one of our uh, uh, alumni is there so uh, uh, being a, uh, a, a student uh, we have enjoyed uh, uh, your teaching and your research experiences uh, so I, uh, whatever the techniques and uh, all the aspects you have followed the same thing mm -hmm. we want to impart to our uh, future generation so many things we have uh, inspired by you sir thank you very much for the mm -hmm. opportunity sir. thank you thank you thank you sir so moving on to the questions again sir there is another question on uh, is there a different adaptation mechanism of mangrove associated microbes as compared to the members of the same genus found on normal land sir actually microorganisms you know they are highly adaptable to any environmental condition because of mutations and things like that and uh, therefore there is no question of uh, you know they are they are highly adaptable species there is absolutely no problem. But in certain obligate forms, obligate uh, forms, the obligate forms, you know, they, 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 they have strict osmotic balance. So if you take, uh, you know, obligate microorganisms like Thrustochytes or Halobacterium, if you bring it to the terrestrial condition, it will be burst out. Okay. So therefore, except the obligate forms, other forms are highly adapted to any condition. And uh, the the, uh, the marine organisms, the Archaea group, you know, they are the extremophilic organisms. Any extreme conditions, you know, they can grow. Okay, sir. Uh, and there is another question, sir. Uh, yes, sir. Sir, you have been muted, Nanak, sir. Ah. Uh -huh. Yes, sir. Uh, sir, uh, and there's another question from another participant who asks that in mangroves, we come across a lot of uh, sulfur content leading to sulfides. What are their effects on aquafauna and uh, soil reclamation? No, actually, you know, the sulfur content, you know, when they are uh, uh, the, the, the microorganisms like reducing bacteria, oxidizing bacteria, they are living together in the mangrove environment. See, actually, in the upper layer, 20% of the upper sediment soil layer has got the aerobic forms. See, sulfur oxidizing bacteria. Go down to the mangrove soil, you know, you have anaerobic bacteria. So, the, the two, uh, it's the largest domain of anaerobic bacteria. So, naturally, you know, the sulfates and other things, you know, they are being accumulated, you know, in the anaerobic uh, system. The moment they are coming to the aerobic system, they are oxidized. But in the higher concentration, what happens? This H2S is converted into sulfuric acid or something like that. Uh, and again, you know, it is an open system. You know, the tidal flushing is there. It is being diluted up or something like that. That's why in many cases, you know, you know, in some instances, you can see the black, black soil with the sinking. Yeah, rotten egg smell and all. It is because of the H2S, because of the disturbances caused to the cell. Not the system is producing the toxic substance. When the system is disturbed, it is released. And the sulfates are very important to bind with the heavy metals, toxic heavy metals. Otherwise, the toxic heavy metals will be available in the ground. So the hydrogen sulfate will immediately bind with the toxic heavy metals buried in the ground. The unique feature of thank you sir thank you thank you for the wonderful uh, lecture sir uh, every time i hear you we try to match up with the, your lecture but then uh, we are just astonished sir you are keeping up to the trend like you you're talking about ai artificial intelligence computers in uh, biology like whenever we uh, it this lecture is both informative for the students and also 
the staff members who are there many of uh, your students are they would like to talk to you actually so they have also appreciated whenever we look upon you when we try to come to your level you go to the next level rising the bar so it is always there sir uh, we will try to catch up with you sometime sir <laughs> thank you sir thank you for the wonderful uh, lecture sir maslamani sir okay. good evening sir so as usual your lecture is uh, excellent sir uh, i can say when i was a student in msc i was amazed uh, to see you uh, always in smiling face very enthusiastic very active uh, but uh, definitely i could not be like this uh, that much enthusiasm you had and uh, i had uh, I, I, i can say i am blessed to have you as my guide phd guy i was there for 8 years i was enjoying my life you were helping a lot uh, to to do research as well as to my personal life and uh, because of this only i am here so not only that and uh, when i see your presentation today's presentation so it's really uh, everything is updated i didn't expect this type of uh, presentation from you so yes simply super sir so you are uh, related to aquaculture and even updated as uh, your uh, hod set artificial intelligence and you have given a lot of avenues to do research as well as to uh, do wonders in aquaculture as well as uh, uh, mangrove cultivation and uh, linking together like uh, sandaram sir uh, you said early um, and uh, so living as a family with uh, wife and mother it's a real <laughs> very very happy moment to uh have with you sir uh, we are really blessed to have your lecture in this uh, webinar series on brain uh, research and uh, aquaculture your lecture is uh, simply sync uh, exactly sync with the <laughs> title and thank you very much sir yes sir uh, uh, i would like to add uh, uh, i would yeah, i would like to add something dr ram santanam uh, dr rajaram and dr dinokaras and all other people and all the listeners you know uh, thank you very much i am really elated by your words sir. and felicitations thank you very much sir thas uh, please give me one minute minute ah, yes sir yes sir i would like to hard on okay so mm -hmm. kadre sir sir he has published over 500 articles yes. he has received lot of awards and mm -hmm. he has completed several projects hebo mm -hmm. hall he is a man who saved nearly 1000 human lives that is the need of the our our research should reach the society it should not end up with the laboratory okay but professor kareshan sir research is always uh, have a human touch societal importance so during time of tsunami actually we are we were there we, we are the witness so there are thousand human lives those who are inhabiting uh, bordering the mangrove which was planted by professor kareshan sir and his uh, team of scientists because of that mangroves there are thousand human lives were saved this is actually is a remarkable achievement made by my professor professor kadresan sir so we have hats up sir we are always uh, i mean uh, inspiring your uh, and uh, i am an enthusiastic lecture so we want to be a, a student of you always okay so with this uh, i would like to uh, compliment and appreciate dr masilamani selvam because he learned several thing from uh, kadresan sir so uh, and, uh, once again thank you sir i wish you all the best thank you very much sir all, all the credit goes to my students yes sir and yes, sir. Uh, you see the science without human faith is yes. disastrous yes our science is for humanity society and the people poor people it should be pro people pro women and pro poor that yes. is important thank you sir thank you very much thank you sir thank you for the kind words uh with this we move on to uh, the end of this session tomorrow please do join us for the third day of this webinar series where we'll be having dr sm rafi uh, who will be the speaker for tomorrow who will who will be delivering a lecture on valuable and value added products from low value fishes wealth from waste please do join us tomorrow thank you sir thank you dr kadresan sir thank you Thank you very much. Sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Sandaram, sir. Thank you. Sir. Thank you. Thank you.